All right, so um, you guys are on this mission to solve quadratic equations. And whoops. And there are, uh, you know, technically three methods to solve quadratic equations, but um, sometimes it just depends on what the situation looks like that will tell you which method to use. So let's just start with quadratic equations, right? And the three methods. And I'm not gonna show all three in this, in this video, but I'll focus on one at a time. You know, the first method is I'm just gonna say to factor, factoring. Factoring and using the zero product property, which you should know, zero product property, which you should know because um, we've done that before. The second method is called the square root property. And um, sometimes, well, completing the square, which is not my favorite, but to each his own. And then the third method is the quadratic formula, which you have to know, because there are situations where you might not have a choice but to use a quadratic formula. X equals the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. When I get to that one, you know, we'll start with um, square root property and completing the square because we've done factoring. So we'll go here and then in the next video, I'll do quadratic formula. Remember that those I cases, complex numbers can pop up. So I hope that you know that as well. If not, you have to review that also. So I'm just gonna make up examples. Um, and we're gonna look at it and, and identify maybe which method we might use to solve them. Obviously I'm focusing on the second method for this video, but um, I'll show you how I can identify that I would wanna use that method. So I'm gonna start with a nice easy problem. X squared, um, is equal to 64, we'll do that. You notice that in this situation, you are able to isolate the squared X case and get a constant number on the right. You know, your quadratic equations, AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero, you know, they have typically three terms. Typically they're trinomials. This one is not, it has the squared term and it has the constant term, but it's missing that middle term. But that's okay um, because we could still solve it. But because of that, we could use the square root property to solve it. Square root property says square root both sides, square root property, square root both sides, go figure. And then um, the square root of x squared is x. You did radical expressions recently. The square root of 64 is eight, but remember that you have to have the same number of solutions as you do your degree. There should be two solutions here. Um, and you, you do get, you do get two solutions. You get a positive or a negative. Anytime you use the square root property and you go and square root both sides this way, whatever you simplify the right-hand side to be, you get a positive and negative version of that. So why does that work? Imagine if I were to replace and plug this back in and check my solution. Um, a positive eight squared is a positive 64. But a negative eight squared is also a positive 64. So both of these solutions work, plus and minus, okay? In my next example, I'm gonna follow the same thing. So here, example two. Um, let's assume that it looks like this. X plus three, the quantity squared, minus four is equal to zero. This does not look like your standard form, right? Your standard form of a quadratic equation. But it does look like I can isolate my squared case and get my constant case on the right. If I add four to both sides, then I'm able to isolate the x plus three squared, the squared situation. And since I'm allowed to or able to isolate the squared situation where on the right-hand side, I have nothing but a number, a constant, I am allowed to use the square root property again. But I'm not done after that. 
and there's a little bit more work. So the square root of the quantity, x plus 3 squared, so the square root cancels with that basically, and I just get x plus 3 on the left. On the right, the square root of 4 is positive 2. But because I'm using the square root property, I get a plus or minus. So I technically have two situations. I have an x plus 3 is equal to negative 2, and an x plus 3 is equal to a positive 2. But that's what I expect because of the fact that I should have two solutions. Well, now I solve these two little equations, subtract 3 from both sides. I get x is either negative 5 or subtract 3, subtract 3, x is equal to negative 1, and these are my two solutions. So this is the square root property if you know, I'm already able to isolate the squared case, meaning get the squared case on the left, even if it's like an x plus a number, the quantity squared, as long as this doesn't have a variable in it and I can move it to the right and it's just a constant, I can use the square root property for these type of quadratic equations. So the next video, um, I'm going to show how to use the square root property with completing the square.